hi class how are you today i'll talk about my work what i do all these um so i'm sharing my screen first so that you can actually see i hope you can see this now so as you see from the title um, and uh, that my topic is about managing a research and development group because I do um, manage a group and also as um, as a manager of the technical service department in my company which is Toso Bioscience LLC I also have another hat which is um, basically I am a senior application scientist also so I have two different roles and that's why um, I also uh, work on the purification of the vaccines and medicinal drugs. So question is how much fun we have there. So I will talk about myself first and then what do I do as a manager, few aspects of being a manager and then obviously the vaccines we purify, particularly during this COVID 19 situation i know everybody everybody knows the word vaccine you know so i'm sure you all know about the word vaccine so you'll be you'll be you'll really find it interesting anyway um you know ab about myself so i did um do my phd in organic chemistry from university of north bengal that is in india um many many years back uh, for last 20 years I'm here I'm a citizen of USA here um, so back then I was um, graduating from this university and then uh, from University of North Bengal I actually did some uh, postdoctoral research in cancer and I did that in um, premier institute which is Indian Institute of Science that's in India also but it's in the um, southern city, uh, southern India. There is a city called Bangalore. This is the main building as you see here. Um, so I did postdoctoral research there. This is the main building. It's a beautiful place actually as you see from this picture. And then um, I went to, um, basically I came to USA. So as you see, on 19th of January 2000 I came to USA and settled here so I joined actually um, in Thomas Jefferson Medical College Hospi College and Hospital which is in Philadelphia you may know this name of the hospital so I used to work in a cancer research center again so this is called Kimmel Cancer Center I used to work as a postdoctoral research um, and then I joined in 2008 um, in Toso Bioscience. Currently, I'm working there also still um, since 2008. Um, and as a member of the technical service team, and I w was basically supporting the purification of monoclonal antibody, vaccine, all those things using different separation technique. When you say chromatography, basically it's a separation te technique. I will tell later on. In 2011, I became a uh, manager of the technical service um, and that technical service is responsible for application development. And for example, if you buy our product, for example, you are working in a pharmaceutical big company and you develop um, vaccines, purify vaccines, then you do use our product. You know, um, this is the brand name of our product, yes, Kajal. Um, main goal is to support the customer who are working on the isolation and purification of the biomolecules. When I say biomolecule, vaccines are biomolecule, proteins are biomolecule, virus biomolecule. So all different kinds of biomolecules and um, we support the customer. So basically after this COVID-19 situation, um, as a biopharmaceutical company, we have um, actually got many, many calls uh, or, or support related uh, phones, emails, uh, because a lot of people, I mean, a lot of scientists in different companies, they are using our products also. 
uh, for the purification of the vaccines. Other than that, um, I love teaching. So um, I worked um, as a adjunct faculty member in Scranton University, then Camden County College. Uh, right now, for last three years, actually I'm teaching in Widener University, which is very close uh, here, you know, very close. Um, then this is about myself, for example, this is the company on the right side, as you see, Toso Bioscience. This is 250 year old oak tree, beautiful tree. This is my office and this is the road leading to my office. It's a beautiful area. Actually, this is in King of Prussia, Philadelphia, suburb of Philadelphia, King of Prussia area. It's, I love this place. So this is my whole group and it's a Japanese company. You will see a lot of Japanese people are there. This is a whole group, you know, and uh, some of, the, and where I am, uh, let me see where I am. Yeah, I'm here. So, and here I am. So you see me, me, actually this photo was taken, you know, when we had a sales meeting, we all had a sales meeting in this company. And that time I took this, we took this photo. Now, this being a Japanese company, actually, um, obviously, you know, it, this that means it's in Japan, the headquarters in Japan. And as you see, this is the manufacturing unit. I went there um, and it's a very big company. Actually, uh, as you see, 743 billion sales, dollar, uh, yen, you know, sales, operating income, if you see, very high. Overall net income is also very high and it's a very big company. Um, this data is from 2017, obviously now we have even grown much better. One thing I wanted to say, this is the, um, this is the, like a city, you know, if you, if you go to this company, it's just like a city, huge area. And as you see this part, this is the area where they are extending, expanding, you know, Japan has so much limited space. They basically, what they do, they fill the ocean with a mud soil and they start making their own land there so they are expanding over the ocean so maybe after a few years you will see it just like this so it's it's artificial expansion that's how they do they don't have much land actually you know it's mostly small country and a lot of mountain so what i do as a manager my goal is basically uh, whatever I do, um, it depends on uh, how I manage my direct reports, means the um, employees who are reporting to me, how I manage them. So I have a lot of things in terms of, uh, to do in terms of making this decision. Decision making is a very important thing as a manager. Obviously, the resources I have to allocate and uh, I have to direct activities and that is mainly to attain goals. So you have to have some goals and you have to achieve the, those goals through other people. Obviously, that's not easy job. So my question will be, are you a manager? So um, I correct answer is yes. Now, when I say managing a little bit more in detail, you need to organize, you need to plan, you need to control, you need to lead. Leadership is also a very important thing. And you have to do a lot of multitasking. You cannot see just do one thing and forget about the other. Everything you have to do together uh, and multiple things you have to juggle, you know, frankly speaking. So now there is a research and development part, which is also my one of my area where I work. Um, so that involved um, managing a lot of things, resource analysis, testing, um, finalizing budgeting is another very important. You need money and you need money and you have to decide how we can spend that money uh, efficiently, you know, and without wasting money. So that is very important. So I do take part in many um, decision in reference to budget committee meetings and all those things. So uh, I would say a little bit more about few aspects of being a manager. Um, so when you are a manager or you are trying to be a manager, then you have to remember that you must have a full understanding and knowledge 
about what's happening here so you have to keep your eyes open ear open you have to have your sixth sense you have to listen to everybody and uh, you have to be very curious always uh, you should be curious about what's happening you should have full knowledge what's going on around yourself now one thing i would say that tenacity is also very very important because sometimes it's not just like um, um, uh, 10 to 5 jobs sometimes you need to work for a long time beyond your working hours just like for example 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. it's you have to have commitment and time you have to have passion um, so it's not just like a regular eight hour job particularly for me I'll tell you or our company I'll tell you this is a multinational company our headquarter in uh, Tokyo our uh, another quad uh, another uh, subsidiary is in Germany another subsidiary is in um, West Coast California San Francisco so that means we work with the people with uh, who are in different places uh, in USA as well as in different places of world so we work in a totally different time zone and as you know Japan is one day um, no not one day 14 hours ahead of us so when I come out of uh, my office uh, I go back home that time their day starts next day starts so sometimes what happened we have to have a meeting with Japan and that means I have to be there up to 830 because that means they are at 8 30 means they are I think 7 o'clock or something like that next morning so you have to you know if you don't feel comfortable then you cannot be a manager and a um, lot of paperwork is there because you will be working with legal administrative communications so that means uh, you have to have a lot of legal work so you have to have better understanding um, and ob obviously I would say this is kind of cartoon but nowadays because a lot of digitization most of the things now in um, electronically but still you have a lot of um, a lot of email um, communication back and forth phone call all these things are there and communication is the key to the success you know any managing uh, you cannot manage until you communicate you, and another thing is listening you have to listen before you can um, if you don't listen you cannot communicate communication is the key to the success and uh, <coughs> excuse me so this is another cartoon but this cartoon uh, actually tells you this this is the message if a manager fails to communicate the right message team member may take away a wrong one if you cannot communicate what you are looking for then what happens the direct reports means the employee who are reporting to you they will not understand what you are looking for so they will work they will devote their time but maybe they will come up with something which you don't like to or you didn't want to have so that's very important and and that's an art frankly speaking for example this is another cartoon uh, saying that I forgot to put my put a smiley face on my sarcastic sarcastic email to you so again communication is an art if you don't communicate properly um, you may actually um, make the other person angry unnecessarily and that does not help and you cannot be angry you have to be always with a smiley face to convey the message you want to you know most of the time like that um, so this is just another cartoon just to show generally how the office look like in a standard company a lot of cubicles and all those things um, what I do personally and I feel that a manager should do is walk around a lot for stand-up meeting meeting with other colleagues in their cubicles share your thoughts share your fun everything um, so <laughs> I walk so much it is true this is not joke it's true I walk so much I come out of my office talk to the people in the cubicle go to the lab go to the other uh, rooms one day one of my colleague who reports to me asked me do you get paid by mileage means I walk so much <laughs> he was asking why you don't use phone I said no sometimes 
I'm just here, two rooms from your office or three rooms. Why? I just it's a face to face. It's much better. So anyway, that is also a part of the communication, frankly speaking. Um, but there will be frustrations, uh, and that is um, black smoke. So, uh, and that's not a good sign. But you have to be able to understand where is the frustration coming from and how you can resolve those frustrations. Because if you cannot resolve those frustrations, then what happens? It becomes a big issue, and you maybe at that time you won't be able to manage. So manager needs to remain calm and contained under a very stressful, frustrating and challenging situation. I'll tell you one day, one um, employee um, became so much frustrated um, that he started yelling um, to someone, you know. And that person came to me saying that, hey, this person is yelling. So I told him, okay, let him come here to my office and then... He came to my office and he started complaining about the other person to me in a very, very loud voice. You know, he was not in his uh, own control. So he was very loud complaining and um, and he was looking for solution. I said, OK, I hear you. I understand. I took a note of all the things you said. But one thing I'll say, let's do it tomorrow. Let's have uh, lunch together tomorrow and we'll talk. The reason is if I talk at the time or discuss at the time, he is so angry and he is not in his own mood. And that's his fault actually. He should not have done that. But how I can manage? I cannot do at any discussion at the time. So I just avoid it and try to get some time. I said, okay, tomorrow we'll take lunch. Uh, we'll go for lunch and then talk. And that's how uh, the issue was resolved. So all those things you have to be very careful about. And as I said, manager needs to remain calm and contained even if his direct report is upset about him or her. And it may happen, your direct report or my direct report is upset. And <laughs> here the cartoon says that this boss uh, has come and he is seeing that his direct report is actually having a you know, uh, cu um, cut out and he is using... Um <laughs> this is very funny, right? So... Um, yeah, you have to remember that. And ethics is very important. Ethics, uh, another thing, very big deal. You know, you have to, whatever you say, whatever principles you follow, if you cannot follow, then what happens? Your direct reports will not follow the principles. So principles, ethics are very important. You have to show the example. You have to be an example for other employee. This is my team, as you see, um, uh, where I am. This is me. And all of my team members are here uh, in the lab. And this is mm, during the Christmas time. So you see all those decorations over the wall. Um, now, question is, after doing all these things, who gets the credit? As a manager, generally, um, we have to know or we have to understand we cannot get the credit if they don't uh, work for uh, us with full hearted. So... Frankly speaking, the credit actually goes to the team, goes to the people who are working for you. Obviously, you will be successful if your team is successful. So as a team, we should take a credit. Manager should not take a credit just by himself or herself because he cannot work without the team. You know? So it's, it's a teamwork. So we have to have that spirit that a good manager, generally what happens, they don't take the credit because he or she knows that Success, whatever you are looking for as a manager, cannot be possible without a teamwork. Teamwork is actually important for every part of the life. Anyway, um, just coming back to the other side of my um, um, story, what I do, um, as you by now, because of the COVID-19, you know what is vaccine. So we do uh, work with vaccine. And those vaccines, what is vaccine? Vaccines are key to prevent the onset of deadly diseases, just like COVID-19, COVID-19 virus. And as you know now that the, those are injected in human body. And most of the time, these vaccines which we take into our body has to be 99.9% .9 pure. Otherwise, uh, FDA, uh, they will catch you. You know, the, the company will be punished or sometimes closed. And viruses are very, very dangerous germ 
and disease causing germ but they do they look very nice you know in fact uh, this is ebola virus you know so they are, they look nice but they are deadly so we need to protect you know so for that reason we have we need a vaccine against each virus frankly speaking and that's why uh, the vaccines are made and these are all biological preparations you know and uh, in, it's in a big bioreactor all these are made and then purified that purification is done by a lot of the um, mm, uh, tools we make uh, and we mm, sell in the market you know and just for your information that uh, the vaccine actually came from the word vaca which is which means cow i think it's greek word and it means cow and um, obviously we, pure, we purify vaccine uh, how vaccine works so for example this uh, this is the bacteria um, and that bacteria is put into mouse in a very small amount so what happens mouse uh, body this is a body and goes into mouses uh, inside the mouse and then mouse creates antibody to fight those antibodies are actually uh, used to inject in our body so that um, in our body antibody will be there when you get the injection and when the disease comes means the body of that virus comes they will fight so antibodies are sold as a drug and we purify them frankly speaking purification process is not easy it's a it's a very complicated procedure and as you see this is the bioreactor where the all these liquids are there inside mm, thousands of gallons of those and we are starting this uh, bacteria or virus and we are um, basically growing them first in a small agarose gel and then we are actually growing there so we are growing here and from there we are actually purifying these are cartoon these are all very very big um, in size when you go to the lab you'll see very big uh, columns like this anyway chromatography uh, is one of the most important method for the purification basically that means when you have a mixture for example your vaccine is actually say blue one and this red or pink and the green one are impurities so idea is you need to separate those impurities so what you do you separate through the column over the time let the green go let the pink go and it's slowly moving compared to the other two so you have time let them go out and then you collect the pure fraction because vaccine has to be 100 percent almost 100 percent pure otherwise it's uh, it causes a lot of immunogenic reactions you know and it's not so this is one of the picture you see the column <laughs> it's 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 a small column though it's big it actually it's a small column a, some of the columns are just like a it may take the whole room you know just uh, we are saying large chromatography column but it's not really large in the in in in, in our industry there are really huge bioreactors are there so what happens uh, when we purify those viruses whether it's pure or not there is a method to P uh, see uh, which is called um, liquid chromatography uh, you'll learn so anyway they, this is a technique to see now just to inform you that our um, uh, torso also has uh, developed a kit uh, to s fight against COVID-19 but this kit is actually um, available only in Japan you know it's not available here but Toso is also actively working uh, um, to fight COVID-19 so this is one of the uh, laboratory pictures you see a lot of instruments I am actually he's a summer intern actually he now he's now in John Hopkins I think um, and so all these uh, some actually once you go to college or after for example um, you come out of the school sometimes you may ask whether I can join here just to learn you know there are a lot of opportunity in industry just to join and learn what's going on so that you know whether you like it whether you don't like it which way you want to go as you choose your path for success in your life you know so you should feel free to uh, approach different companies um, for any position available as an intern we love to get take intern and interns also learn a lot 
they even publish paper you know if they are good and they can publish paper you know uh, 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 when working with the scientists so myself and my team members present oral presentation posters at number of conferences involve domestic and international travel as you see this is just few of the different places for uh, i visited as a participant of uh, in different conferences um, so you have a lot of opportunity i have a couple of videos um, in in youtube for example where i have talked over um, uh, uh, basically about our company about our product mainly those videos are produced by the mono, um, sales and marketing for promoting our products this is one of the picture where i'm presenting poster nowadays i don't do because i am pretty senior in my company my um, junior colleagues they do mostly uh, but i used to do a lot this poster presentations uh, i do still but now i prefer my colleagues junior colleagues do this more than me um, this is couple of other i am uh, a member of certain organic organizational committee and as you see i'm giving a um, it's a presentation there also actually it's a lecture i'm giving um, in a particular conference this is a beautiful place in yale university when i was there so there are fun times like as you see here i am participating in gift packing and gift exchange i think this is the gift exchange uh, this is the whole uh, another picture when we had a group meeting and we took the picture during the christmas time i think and i need to travel all over the world for interacting with the company management members as well as with the customer so in this position you may have a lot of opportunity to travel and you will find real real fun you know at some point you will see that um, all of your effort in studying uh, all the devotion you had in your uh, study and all those things actually help you in um, growing up the ladder ladder you know uh, to grow yourself which will be really useful this is in switzerland this is in can all these photos you know from different parts of the world as you see this is from cancun mexico um, this is the northern light when i was uh, traveling to this is not the real picture this is from uh, um, what i say google but what i wanted to tell you that when i was flying to i have been in japan seven times or six times but two times i saw the aurora borealis northern light when i was flying over the north pole you know so a lot of things you will see as you travel but all this comes only because you um, try your best to do um, in your school in your college higher education higher ed there is no substitution of the higher education if you want to grow if you in your uh, life then you have to have higher education and this is in punta cana dominican republic another um, time we visited there for a meeting and so um, in general i would say if i ask you how much fun is there that was my first slide so i would say a lot in achieving the goal achieving the goal itself is a fun seeing the product launched that is another fun when you get the positive feedback from the customers or your even your direct reports you get appreciations from peers customers and you get recogni recognition and so many um, different types of appreciations you will definitely um, love it so um, that's my inspiration my wife my son and maxwell that my dog we love <laughs> he see he's playing with his dog you know we love uh, is a beautiful dog and and uh, i would say thank you and as i said we are hiring frankly speaking if you go to college in first year second year or even after school i mean after 12th grade obviously if you are interested in um, any of the intern positions you may apply here you may apply in any industry but you should look for some exposure you know that's why you should and uh, you should apply okay uh, with that i finish and i wish you all the best and uh, i know it's a virtual meeting maybe i'm not sure i can get your questions or not i cannot interact but i really wish you all the best and i would say thank you very much for your time okay good luck thank you bye